Welcome to Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time Part 48. This one is mainly about making exhaust fittings. On these two Cotswold Heritage engines, the exhaust flanges are not threaded. They're designed to have the piping silver soldered into the flange. But for this application, I do not want to do that. I need to silver solder an adapter into the end of the flanges to make it so that I can use 3 16ths of an inch diameter pipe with 5 16ths by 32 threads per inch union nuts. And why do I want to do that? Well, here is a quarter by 40 double adapter. And I think that in this particular application, it's a bit small for the exhaust piping. The following edited clips are taken from my series Building a Model Steam Plant Using Two Engines. The individual episodes contain a lot more information. What you see here are just useful tips taken from the series. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. I need to fit a steam union like this to each of the flanges. For any viewers watching this who don't know what ME means, it stands for Model Engineer or Model Engineering, and it's a type of thread form commonly used in model engineering. Each of the flanges on both of the engines are held in place by 10 BA bolts. The flange that was fitted to the Vulcan beam engine came off quite easily, the bolts were not very tight. But on this Cyclops engine the bolts were very tight and very tight all the way out. But eventually I got there and removed them. It took quite a long time with a very very small BA spanner, and I didn't show this on the video because you don't want to hear a grown man cry. And now, without further ado, here they are. Two identical flanges on the bench. Two very oily identical flanges on the bench. I'm going to be silver soldering these, so I'm sitting them in a small pot of cellulose thinners, and as we know, cellulose thinners is called lacquer thinner in the USA. I gave them a good stir, and then removed them from the cellulose thinners using surgical forceps, health and safety, etc. Over now to my small boxwood lathe, and what I need to do is make some adapters that I'm going to silver solder into the two flanges that you've just seen. First of all, I need to reduce the end of the piece of brass down to a quarter of an inch. Although I haven't shown it at this stage, I used a micrometer first, and I got it to the final size, which is a nice easy fit using the flange. For all the purists who are watching, this first sequence has been in real time, now it's speeded up, because life is too short to watch a piece of metal spinning round while I remove little bits of it. So after many applications of the micrometer to make sure it's the right size, and it's a nice easy fit on the flange, I don't want it to be a tight fit, because if it was very tight on the shaft, the silver solder would not penetrate. In this clip, I'm threading the main part of the brass bar using my tailstock die holder fitted with a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch die. Normally I do this by hand, but to save time for the video, I did it under power. I put the lathe in back gear so it's going very slowly. I ran the die down a second time, and this time with a bit of lubricant because the brass was squeaking quite a lot. If when you're machining brass, you get this high-pitched squeaking noise, use a little bit of lubricant. Here's the finished thread, and in this clip I'm using an old paintbrush to brush away the chippings. Now I need to part it off to the correct length. When these union nuts are tightened up on the flanges, which will have these adapters fitted, I don't want too much thread showing. That's why I've just used a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch nut, so I can part it off to the correct length. And here's the parting operation. Again, it's making a bit of a squeaking noise, but it's not the end of the world. Brass is nowhere near as hard as the tool steel that's cutting it, so it's hardly likely to lock up. This has nothing to do with the size of the lathe. You often get chatter on small lathes. It's just that the brass is bending because it's a very soft metal. I never part off all the way if I can help it. I part off nearly to the end and then break it off because if it falls into the chip tray, it may be gone forever. Although I must admit on this lathe, the small Boxford, I have cleaned out the chip tray. It's not too bad now. That's one done, now time for the other. Oh, I hate mass production. So I've speeded this part up by 400%. I set the parting tool this time, not using a union nut, I used the first part that had made as a guide. The next part of the sequence is to drill the hole down the centre, because this wouldn't be a good union if it didn't have a hole down the centre. I'm using a centre drill first, as always, but in this case I'm making a deep depression in the end of the piece. And this is to accept the 60 degree coned union that will be silver soldered onto the end of the pipe. The hole down the centre of this adapter is 5 seconds of an inch. Here I'm repeating the process on the other piece of brass. 
Nothing new here, it's exactly the same process as previously shown. And eventually I end up with two union adapters. I'm coating the ends of them with some silver solder flux. You will notice that the quarter by 40 part of the union adapters doesn't go all the way through the flange. There's a reason for this. With both of the flanges sat on their respective union adapters, it's time to silver solder them together. You can see how I'm doing this, plenty of heat. When it gets to red heat, I apply the solder, which flashes round the joint. And that's why the brass part doesn't come to the end of the flange, because the silver solder would make the end of the flange that fits the engine uneven. Normally I use sticks of silver solder, but when you're using the wire type, remove the blowtorch slightly before you apply this wire type silver solder, otherwise it's likely to melt and drop off before it gets anywhere near the part. Once the components have cooled sufficiently, and it's called cooled to black, which means they're no longer glowing red, quench them in water. Not only does this make it safe to handle them, the thermal shock removes some of the oxidised scale. The only problem with silver soldering, as opposed to soft soldering, is the heat is intense and you have to spend some time cleaning up the parts. I should really put these in the acid bath, but I cleaned them up on the polishing spindle and they look fine. I'm applying some Loctite 542 to the flange, so that when it's bolted to the mating surface of the cylinder, nothing's going to leak. I'm fitting the flange to the Vulcan beam engine first, using my modified box spanner. And now I'm fitting the other flange to the Cyclops engine. And here I'm fitting a union nut to make sure it fits. Yes, it fits and it looks okay. And here on the Vulcan, this one fits too. And that's very good news. The flanges now look okay. And the next job is to make the piping and that's in the next episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.